Okay, so the the new phenomenon on the market right now is this Wall Street Bets, the Reddit group, apparently 3 million followers. And as we know, they, they pushed the GME from $5 to 500 and the AMC went from $2 to 22 or something. And this KOSS also went from, they traded up to 140 from $2. So, you know, it was huge money made by the early entries, but those that, you know, came in late to the game are getting crushed. 500 to 200, 140 to 40, you know, down 100 bucks. But, and so the next one that they were talking about was silver, and this is going to be there, you know, it was all over the internet. Go long silver, it's going to the moon, you know, we're going to squeeze them. Blah, blah, blah. The problem with that strategy for that, for this group is that the silver market is so huge. It's a commodity and it's a, you know, it's a multi, multi billion dollar every day. People are selling, you know, mining companies producing and selling silver. So in the, I can't remember if it was in the 80s or the 90s, there was a group called, the, there was these two guys, the Hunt Brothers, and they tried to corner the silver market and it went from $5 to 50, but it, but it didn't end well for them. It, it, and they couldn't support it anymore. And, and, um, it, and it, it sold off. And I, th I think what people aren't realizing is that there are, there already is huge float, let's call it huge float in these in, in these, uh, maybe there's a big short position, sure. I mean, that could squeeze it, but it's going to be just a short term phenomenon. Um, the, the price of silver being a commodity is based on supply and demand. And what you have to recognize is that these aren't the only people that are owning silver, the 3 million followers, if that's how many there is on this Wall Street bets. They're not the only ones that own silver. It's such a huge, huge market. And as the price goes up, uh, people start selling their silver, their silver cutlery, <laughs> knives, and their, you know, their vases, their silver jugs. I mean, that's what happened the last time. And so there's a huge, there's a potential for a huge supply of silver. Maybe it takes a pop, I don't know. But the other big thing about the silver market is there's there's huge producers that, you know, huge mining companies that are producing nothing but silver or gold and silver. And so what they do is, and they have a very, you know, they have a very sophisticated hedging uh, department where they hedge normally one third of their position of their production. They forward sell it. So as the price of go as this price of silver maybe starts to skyrocket, there's going to be more and more and more supply by these uh, sophisticated hedging programs that the mining companies have, and they're they're probably cla they're sitting around the boardroom clapping their hands and saying, "Yeah, come on, guys, get this thing going." Absolutely, uh, it's going to make nothing but money for us. So. You know, as silver goes up, the big mining companies will hedge their will hedge their positions. Now they'll be short. In effect, they'll be short. And if it went too wild, then they might they might have to cover because they wouldn't have the ability to cover the margin uh, with their you know in the futures market, which is which would be huge. But if they have forward production, or if they're you know their mining companies are making they're, they they. They produce silver every day. They can deliver. Uh, when the contract expires, they just deliver the, the silver to whoever, whoever owns the contract on the expiration date. So there's a potential for huge supply as a hedging basis. So can these guys and girls push silver up? Yeah, maybe for a bit, for sure. But it's again, it's not going to end well. That's the first side of the story. The second part of this story is that there's not unlimited funds from this group of retail buyers. Some of them bought a share or 10 shares or 100 shares of GME, and some of them are still long. Some of them sold maybe, but some are still long or some are still holding. Now, if, they're, if they bought at 500, their money is tied up. They're not selling. 
they'll hold it through to the end till it goes back to zero and lose all their money. That's pretty typical for retail buyers. Those of them that are in a profit position, they're going to sell. They think, okay, this is the next play. How much more can I make on GME? Not too much. But silver's at 20. And if it goes to 500, how much can I make? Tons and tons. So I'm going to sell my GME. I'm going to sell my AMC. And I'm going to sell my KOSS and free up capital and, and get on to the next ride. And this is exactly what we see happening. These, these trades are now coming off because the next, the next deal is on. And the junkies need to get into the next deal. And so they're bailing out of these companies, the, the, you know, the ones that were the big movers, and taking their money and, and looking to buy silver. So um, these, the, the, these first stocks, they're, I think they're, gonna, they're, they're done. This is the backside of the move for them now. The shorts will, will smell the blood. They'll start coming in, and they'll drive it back down lower. And... Um, it won't end well for the people that came in late to the to the trade. That's my theory.